Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First things first, next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. Please post your questions either in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel on the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to remain anonymous. By the way, I'm aware that many of you study the Chinese language and try to practice this whenever you have the opportunity. Well, I appreciate and admire your effort in learning the language unless you possess native or near-native proficiency in the language. Your questions about the martial art topics and the concepts will most likely be misunderstood by me and uh, I won't be able to provide you with the satisfactory answer. That's why I request you to send me your questions in English instead of Chinese. Likewise, if you feel that I misunderstood your questions in English, please do not hesitate to let me know. So, I look forward to your questions for next week's Q&A. In Canada, we are entering, in my opinion, the most difficult time of the year since the weather here is very cold and many outdoor activities are simply impossible for most people. To my knowledge, many people may suffer from psychological issues such as depression around this time. And uh, the restrictions caused by the pandemic make things even worse, causing many of us to experience an increased level of uh, stress. Maintaining a regular martial art practice, Xiu Dao practice, or any other physical or energetic exercises will greatly improve mental health. During this period, it is more important to keep a regular and healthy schedule and maintain discipline in practice, which will have a positive impact on the quality of life. I look forward to the weather getting better and the restriction getting eased, if not totally lifted. As I have mentioned before, all of us have and are still going through challenges because of uh, difficult times, so we should support each other as uh, fellow community members. That is one of the many important reasons for me to use this channel to communicate with all of you. In China, going to university requests passing a university entrance exam. Back in my time, it was one of the most competitive events in our lives, since university education was considered a scarce resource. Universities back then were owned only by the government and only very qualified students were allowed admission. When I was a teenager, I had to study for many hours every day in order to help me maintain my martial art practice. My grandfather and my father always reminded me to focus on the basics instead of practicing everything. For example, my grandfather told me that I should only practice stretching and fajin exercise instead of working on different routines and new exercises when I'm very busy preparing for different exams. This period lasted for about a year. Uh, during that year, even though I did not learn any new content, I was able to make progress in my martial skills by only focusing on the basics. So, if you are going through a difficult period in your life, no matter what the reason, I recommend you focus on fundamentals such as stretching and fajin exercises and resume your regular practice routine when the situation improves. In other words, you should be flexible with your practice and be ready to adjust it depending on the external environment. About the Dao Yi, 
we are still working on testing different solutions for the online magazine and we are making some progress. Hopefully, we will be done soon and then we will work on collecting and reviewing content submissions from many authors and practitioners. So, if you want to contribute your writing to the online magazine, please contact Dao Yi. The link is in the description. In today's video, I'd like to focus on an important topic related to the internal styles of martial arts. It is used to describe the application of the mind in martial practice. The term is Nei Yi, or internal mind. It is a popular term, but unfortunately, its definition, meaning, and application have not been elaborated in the community so far as most people have simply taken it as face value. To fully understand Nei Yi, you have to understand not only its background, but more importantly, other terms related to or derived from it. While most attractive terms tend to not be popular in the community, Nei Yi is one of the few exceptions. Nei Yi, though an abstract term, is relatively popular in the community. With this video, I plan to make Nei Yi less abstract and easier to practice. Topics covered in today's video include first, Xian Tian and Hou Tian in Taoism, second, Nei Yi and Wai Xing, third, Nei Yi in the internal styles, fourth, principles of martial Nei Yi, fifth, misperceptions of Nei Yi, sixth, demonstration, and seventh, takeaways. So, Without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. Xian Tian and Hou Tian in Taoism Xian Tian and Hou Tian are a pair of important concepts in Taoist study. I have a prior video titled Key Concept of Xiu Dao, Taoist Meditation, in which I have briefly introduced Xian Tian and Hou Tian in a Taoist context. Link is in the description. So, I'd like to explain these terms in a more detailed approach in today's video. The term Xian Tian originated from Dao De Jing, or the Book of Dao. In the 25th chapter, Lao Zi said, quote, Yo Wu Hun Cheng, Xian Tian Di Sheng. Translation Something formerly was created and it was born before heaven and the earth. End the translation. So, Xian Tian is a short version of Xian Tian Di Sheng, born before heaven and the earth. Xian means before, Tian means heaven, Di means earth, and Sheng means birth. Heaven and the earth together means the universe. Lao Zi used the term Xian Tian Di Sheng to express the nature of Tao. Later, Taoist practitioners used the term Xian Tian to express the energy that existed before the birth of a person. Very often, people translate the term Xian Tian to Prenatal in English. In Xiu Dao practice, Xian Tian is used to describe a state of being without any thoughts, judgments, even feelings or sensations. This is a state where postnatal energy is converted to prenatal energy. It is an ideal state and the process in which the real benefit of a Xiu Dao manifests. So, any intentional activities including study, reading, practicing, visualization, and so on are just forms of preparation of entering the 
prenatal state. In other words, prenatal practice is the practice without practice. It sounds very counterintuitive, but what I said just now points to the spirit of a Xiu Dao practice. Xian Tian is a prenatal and Hou Tian is a postnatal. Hou Tian is the starting point in practice with the goal of reaching Xian Tian. If you are interested in learning more about Xiu Dao, please check out my regularly updated Xiu Dao playlist. Link is in the description. Xian Tian, being a Xiu Dao term, was not used originally in martial art practice. However, internal style martial artists have frequently borrowed Daoist terms to express martial concepts. Regardless, the meaning of Xian Tian used in early Tai Chi document such as Chen Xin's Tai Chi book and some second generation Xing Yin masters were very specific. They used Xian Tian to describe the energy used to nourish the spirit. In their usage, Xian Tian didn't serve a specific function in combat situations. The direct application of the Xian Tian in martial art practice was a much later product less than a hundred years old. <clears throat> Even more important, the meaning of Xian Tian used in martial art practice has changed compared to the original meaning used in Xiu Dao practice. In martial practice, Xian Tian is used to express the skills at a subconscious level, which I introduced in many of my prior videos. The martial art community adopted Nei Yi as an expression for the application of the mind to reach Xian Tian state in martial art practice. So, what exactly is Nei Yi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Nei Yi and Wai Xing. Following the discussion in the previous topic, Xian Tian is a nice and attractive term used to describe the result of a martial art practice, originally found in Xiu Dao but drastically changed in meaning in martial art practice. Now, let me introduce the term Nei Yi, which I describe as the solution to reach a high level in the internal styles. So, if you prefer to use Xian Tian as an adjective to describe the ideal stage of practice, then Nei Yi is definitely the solution to reach such a level. Now, let me introduce Nei Yi in today's video. Nei Yi consists of two characters. Nei means inner or internal. Yi means mind. Put together, it means mental activities in martial art practice. Now, you may be wondering if Nei Yi is prenatal or postnatal in the context of martial art practice. Well, the answer is very simple. It is postnatal. Nei Yi is an activity intentionally applied by the practitioner during martial training. So, does Nei Yi have a counterpart or polar opposite? Yes, and it's called Wai Xing. Wai means external and Xing means form or shape. If we describe Nei Yi as formless, then Wai Xing has a physical shape or form. Also, Wai Xing is the result of applying Nei Yi on the physical body in the course of performing martial movements. In other words, any Wai Xing should be the external result of internal Nei Yi practice, with practice, with practice being the operative word. Wai Xing can be perceived 
as the application of Nei Yi at both conscious and subconscious levels in combat situations. Or any martial movement or Wai Xing is neither intentionally or reflectively applying Nei Yi. Furthermore, you may also be wondering about the relative importance between Nei Yi and Wai Xing. Well, I have to say both of them are important, especially at the beginning of the practice. As you make progress, Nei Yi will gain increasing importance and become the dominant factor at an advanced level. I have to say that correct Nei Yi will create correct Wai Xing. Well, correct Wai Xing is a result of correct Nei Yi. If Nei Yi is wrong, then Wai Xing will definitely be wrong as well. Likewise, if Wai Xing is wrong, then Nei Yi must have an issue as well. So, each depends on the other as a foundation in practice. Especially in martial art practice, Nei Yi and Wai Xing are never mutually exclusive. In other words, there is no state that is purely Nei Yi without any Wai Xing and vice versa. Of course, at an advanced level, a subtle Wai Xing can still contain a strong Nei Yi, which I will introduce in a future video. Traditionally, Nei Yi is always emphasized in martial training since it is very hard to master. But it doesn't imply that Wai Xing isn't important. So, you should pay attention to both Nei Yi and Wai Xing in practice. Gradually, your Nei Yi practice will have a visible impact on your Wai Xing. So, how should you apply Nei Yi in each of the three internal styles? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Nei Yi in the Internal Styles. First, let's talk about the Nei Yi in Tai Chi. In the famous Tai Chi document, Shi San Shi Xing Gong Xin Jie, or 13 Postures Practice Explanation, quote, Yi Xin Xing Qi, Wu Ling Chen Zhuo, Nai Neng Shou Lian Ru Gu, Yi Qi Yun Shen, Wu Ling Sun Shui, Nai Neng Bian Li Chong Xin. Translation Use the mind to circulate the energy and make it stable, so that energy can be gathered into the bones. Use energy to move the body and make it smooth, so that movements can naturally follow the mind. End the translation. These sentences implies the relationships between the mind, the energy, and the body. Simply put, Mind controls energy, and energy controls body. In Chen Xin's Tai Chi book, he has emphasized the Nei Yi many times in the context of the coordination between mind and body, or internal mind and form. For example, Chen Xin said, Da Quan Xin Mei Zhu. Mind is the master of practicing martial art. I will introduce Chen Xin's specific teaching regarding internal mind and external form in the future. Now, let's talk about Nei Yi in Xing Yi practice. The importance of Xing or Wai Xing and Yi or Nei Yi should be gauged from the name of the style itself. Both of the five elements and the twelve animals in Xing Yi reflects the requirement of integration of Wai Xing and Nei Yi, or external form and internal mind. By the way, in the old days, the five elements represented the Yi practice, while the twelve animals represented the Xing practice, since the five elements form the foundation of Xing Yi practice and are prerequisite for the twelve animals. That implies the Yi practice is the foundation of the Xing practice in Xing Yi. So, even though 
Xing Yi emphasizes both internal mind and external form. Internal mind is considered the foundation of the entire style. In other words, internal mind governs external form. Last but definitely not least, let's talk about Nei Yi in Ba Gua. Ba Gua's eight basic walking postures mainly focus on Nei Yi practice, while the rest of Ba Gua practice, such as eight big palms, mainly focus on the variations and the combinations of Wai Xing. In other words, in Ba Gua practice, the development of skill sets through Wai Xing occurs under the constant guidance of Nei Yi. To summarize, all three internal styles of martial arts emphasize Nei Yi besides its Wai Xing practice. Another reason people use the word internal to describe the style including Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Ba Gua is due to the emphasis on Nei Yi or internal mind. Now, that you know what Nei Yi is and its importance in the three styles, how should you actually practice martial Nei Yi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4 Principles of Martial Nei Yi. As I mentioned earlier in this video, Nei Yi is an abstract concept. However, in martial practice, Merely introducing some movements is insufficient to thoroughly explain the concept. That's why we need to look at the important principles related to a concept. Understanding the principles related to Nei Yi is an effective way to understand and practice Nei Yi in martial art practice. In today's video, I'd like to introduce five important principles related to Nei Yi. I will introduce them in increasing order of complexity of a practice, starting from the simple and progressing to the advanced. They are first, Zhuan Zhu Yong Fa, second, Ti Hui Qi Gan, third, Xing Bu Dong Yi Xian Dong, Yi Yi Dong Xing Bi Chong. Fourth, Yi Nian Tao Ti. Fifth, Quan Wu Quan Yi Wu Yi. Wu Yi Zhi Zhong Shi Zhen Yi. Now, let me explain them one by one. First, Zhuan Zhu Yong Fa. Focus on the martial application for each movement. In martial art practice, the Nei Yi lies in the focus and the visualization of the martial application of each movement. Nei Yi does not mean that you have to focus on an intangible internal mind since being able to focus on a specific object, movement, or even a feeling is the basic function of the mind. So, in martial practice, focusing and visualizing on the objectives of a movement is precisely Nei Yi practice. Any intangible aspect in martial practice should be interpreted and practiced with a specific approach. In the case of Nei Yi, the approach is to focus on the martial application of each movement. So, no matter how fast or slow your movements may be, mental focus on the martial application of each movement should always be present during practice. Second, Ti Hui Qi Gan. Pay attention to the energetic feeling in physical movement. This is my original creation. At a certain point, especially when you practice movement in a slow and relaxed manner, you will experience different energetic sensations or the feeling of energy moving in and out of the body during martial practice. At such moments, paying special attention to Nei Yi is the key factor in practice. Energetic sensations and feelings are a result of energy flow, which should be managed with the corresponding Nei Yi practice. 
A good solution for this is to retain focus on the movement while simultaneously maintaining passive awareness of the energetic phenomenon and to avoid shifting your focus from the movements to the energetic phenomenon. In other words, you should let the energy work naturally by itself without any strong or forced intervention by Nei Yi, since the energetic phenomenon is the result of naturally applying Nei Yi. Third, Xing Bu Dong Yi Xian Dong Yi Yi Dong Xing Bi Chong. That is one of the old concepts regarding Nei Yi practice. Let me translate the first part first. Xing means body or form, Bu means without. Dong means action or movement. Yi means mind. Xian means first. Put it together, this means the mind should act prior to the body movement. Now, for the second part, Yi means ready. Bi means must. Chong means rush, forward or any direction depending on the situation. Put together, the second sentence means that the body should rush forward when the mind acts. The, these two sentences indicate the relation between the body, mind, and action. The mind should act prior to the body, and the body should act very fast as soon as the mind acts. Fourth, Yi Nian Tao Ti let the mind go beyond the physical body. This is also my original creation. At the more advanced level, you should adapt a practice that intentionally lets your Nei Yi go beyond your physical body. For example, when pushing forward, extend your Nei Yi further by moving it out of your body. Please keep in mind that you should not practice this approach every time. Instead, you can add this approach periodically, but not each time. It is very important to follow this, or else you will not let your Nei Yi work naturally. Fifth, Quan Mu Quan, Yi Wu Yi, Wu Yi Zhi Zhong Shi Zhen Yi. This is a very popular classic Xing Yi proverb, and I'd like to use it to describe an advanced level of Nei Yi practice. First, let me translate it. Quan means fist or martial practice. Wu means without. Yi means mind or Nei Yi. Zhen means real. Together, the literal translation of this famous Xing Yi proverb is Fist without fist, mind without mind, real mind lies in the state of without mind. Now, let me explain it further. Quan Wu Quan or fist without fist means that in martial practice, you should not limit your focus only to your physical movement. An advanced level of martial practice is formlessness or movements without a fixed routine or letting martial movements happen naturally according to a specific training objective. Yi Wu Yi means any Nei Yi practice should be done naturally and never be forced. Physical movements of Quan and the internal mind of Yi should reach a level at which practice happens without following a predefined frame, which reflects the fundamental Taoist belief that any practice is the way to liberation. The real Nei Yi is achieved from the intentionless rising of Nei Yi, which is also a result of a natural approach in practice. It takes years of practice to reach this level. Regardless, that should be the goal from the very beginning of your Nei Yi practice. To summarize, I introduced five important principles for Nei Yi practice. 
in increasing order of uh, complexity of practice. Now, let's clarify some uh, common misperceptions of the nei yi in the next topic. Topic 5. Misperceptions of uh, nei yi. Today, I'd like to point out a couple of uh, common misperceptions about the nei yi. First, since there exists the term nei yi or internal mind, then there should also exist the term wai yi or external mind. For example, emotional expression in martial practice is wai yi or external mind. Well, this is a huge misperception. There is no such term as wai yi. Yi or mind is a term used to describe the intangible internal mental activity. The mind can work on external subjects such as the body, but the mind is still an internal aspect. So, there is no such concept called Yi. -E. Well, recently, some people have begun to use Yi -E to describe external expressions of emotion such as facial expressions during martial practice. Actually, any such emotional expression is just the Yi -E, or external form, which I have mentioned earlier in this video. Moreover, as I have mentioned in last week's video on the Xing Yi's 24 method, I do not recommend showing any false emotions during martial practice. Instead, you should maintain an outwardly natural expression during martial practice. Second, since Nei Yi is so important, practicing Nei Yi alone without any physical movements will be sufficient. Well, this is another common misperception. In martial art practice, a mental activity alone without any corresponding physical effort will not provide any martial benefit. Your Nei Yi will be merely an illusion, instead of a martial practice. The pursuit of a Nei Yi alone without working on its corresponding physical aspects will lead to isolation between Nei Yi and Wai Xing, which is wrong. This is a very common misperception in the internal martial art community, which should be avoided. Internal style practice or the application of a Nei Yi depends on correctly understanding and managing different mental and physical aspects, and not on magic. Topic 6. Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a bagua exercise to practice the integration between Nei Yi and Wai Xing. Okay, a simple bagua exercise. Topic 7. Takeaways First, Xian Tian and Hou Tian are Tao's terms used to describe the nature of energy in different stages. Second, Nei Yi or internal mind was originally a Taoist concept that was later adopted by martial art practitioners to express the application of the mind in practice. Third, all the three internal styles of martial arts emphasize Nei Yi besides its Wai Xing practice. Fourth, Principles of Martial Nei Yi First, Zhuan Zhu Yong Fa Focus on the martial application for each movement. Second, Ti Hui Qi Gan Pay attention to the energetic feeling in physical movement. Third, Xing Bu Dong Yi Xian Dong Yi Yi Dong Xing Bi Chong The mind should act prior to the body, and the body should act very fast as soon as the mind acts. Fourth, Yi Nian Tao Ti 
let the mind go beyond the physical body. Faith, 全无全，亦无意，无意之中是真意。Faith without faith, mind without mind, real mind lies in the state of without mind. Faith, misperceptions of 内意 <coughs> First, since there exists the term 内意 or internal mind. Then there should also exist the term Y E O external mind. Second, since Nei Yi is so important, practicing Nei Yi alone without any physical movements will be sufficient. Remember, those two are misperceptions. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get a better idea of Nei Yi and Y Xing practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. A quick reminder to send me your questions for next week's Q and A video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.